Next problem. A 78 gram copper bar is dropped into a graduated cylinder containing 45.8 milliliters of water. What will the new water level be? So, hmm, we're really trying to solve for is the volume of that piece of copper, right? Because that'll tell us how much the water level is going to go up by. Again, sticking just with the factor label method. 78 grams, two significant figures is all we got here. Let's see, it's copper. We go over here to copper, 8.92 grams per milliliter. Think about it. We want to have that 8.92 grams on bottom, one milliliter on top, so the grams will cancel. Now we're in milliliters, and we have our answer. Rounded to two significant figures, it's just 8.7 milliliters. That's not the answer to the problem, though. The question says, what will the new water level be? 8.7 milliliters is just the volume of the copper. I think you can see that we want to simply add that to the 45.8 milliliters that was already in there to get to new liquid level, 55.5 milliliters. I think you agree that looks like it could be a correct answer, 55.5. It didn't go up by that much. Okay? Next problem. Number seven. Similar but different twist. A graduated cylinder contains 67.8 milliliters of alcohol. How many 6.5 gram lead pellets must be added to raise the liquid level past the 83.0 milliliter mark? So we're going to add a bunch of lead pellets to this. How many pellets do we have to add to make the water level go above the 83 milliliter mark? Okay. The volume of the pellets, by the way, must equal 83 milliliters minus the 67.8 that was already in there. It doesn't matter in this problem that the liquid's alcohol. I know alcohol is one of our substances, but that's not really what this question's about. It could be any liquid, and it would still go up by the same amount. 15.2 milliliters is what we're trying to get. So, factor label method, 15.2 milliliters of lead. There's the density of lead. Notice how this time milliliters is on bottom to make it cancel. Now we have how many grams of lead, and I could stop there, but wait a second. How about we use that 6.50 grams of lead per pellet as a factor label step? Right there. We're trying to get rid of grams and into pellets, so... How about that? That gives us an answer of 26.2 pellets. Now, you can't really take 26.2 pellets. They're individual things, can't be broken apart. So really to make it go above the 83 milliliter mark, we don't want to round down, we want to round up. So the answer is 27 pellets. Okay? Question number eight. A rectangular piece of gold foil has a mass of 0.673 grams a length of 12.39 centimeters, and a width of 8.40 centimeters. What is its thickness? Hmm. Well, we do know its mass is 0.673 grams. We know it's gold, and gold's density is 19.3 grams per milliliter. That grams is going on bottom to have it cancel. That gives us the volume of this gold foil, 0 0.0349 milliliters. Remember, a milliliter is the same thing as a cubic centimeter. So we now know the volume of that. And here's the big trick in this, knowing that that sheet, that sheet of gold foil, is actually kind of a rectangular block with a very, very, very small height. So length times width times height, that equals volume. We have the volume, 0 .3, 0 0.0349 cubic centimeters. We know the length, we know the width. We're going to solve this for h, the height, which will be the thickness. Well, clearly, we can divide both sides by both the 12.39 centimeters and the 8.40 centimeters. They'll completely cancel out on the right side. That'll leave us with just H, what we're trying to solve for. On the left side, notice how the centimeters and centimeters on bottom will cancel out two of the three centimeters on top. That'll just leave us with centimeters to the first, or just centimeters, which makes sense. We're going to have an answer as a thickness. It's going to be in centimeters gives us the very small number of 0 0.000335 centimeters. We have three significant figures in the numbers that went into it, three, three, and four, so we round our answer off to three, which is what it has there. That's a very small thickness. In fact, if I convert that to micrometers, 3.35 millionths of a meter. I actually looked it up, and gold foil is actually much thinner than that still. It has a variety of thicknesses, but you can get it 30 times thinner than that. Um, there's a little photo that shows some gold foil. It gets hammered out between these vellum sheets and gets to be so thin it's, it's actually transparent. Um, it gets down to be about 0.1 microns, micrometers thick.
Okay. Finally, last problem number nine. A five gram copper nail is driven into a five gram block of pine. That looks painful. Will this object float or sink in water? Hmm. Well, we know density is mass divided by volume. And I think we know that if it's a mixture of two different substances, we really want the total mass and the total volume. Well, the total mass is easy. If it's five grams of copper and five grams of pine, it's the total mass has to be 10 grams. But what about the volume? We're not given the volumes, but we can figure them out given the equation. So using the factor label method, five grams of copper, and there's the density of copper turned upside down so we can get a volume, has a volume of just 0.561 milliliters. Five grams of pine, there's the density of pine, has obviously a much larger volume, 9.43 milliliters. You can tell that from the picture. We're going to assume we can just add those two volumes together. Now, there's a that's not completely true. Probably when we hammered the nail into the pine, the pine around that nail hole got compressed a little bit. We're assuming it didn't. We're assuming that the pine got pushed to the side, that volume is additive just like mass is additive. That's not always true, but we're going to assume it to be the truth here. Okay? This gives us a volume of 9.99 milliliters, darn close to the mass of 10.00 grams. So if our density then is 10.00 grams divided by 9.99 milliliters, well, that would give a density of 1.001 .001 grams per milliliter, just slightly greater than water. But if I want to be real nitpicky, it should only have three significant figures, and 1.00 would have the same density. I'm going to wager that we really can't tell. This is too close to call. Maybe you put it in water, it'll slowly sink the way I'm showing it there. It might float. There are a lot of things in, in chemistry and science in general where the measurements just aren't precise enough. Um, to be able to make a, a, a call on that. So anyway, there it is. Um, do notice something. Even if you had the same density, 1.00 for the density of, the, of the, the object, you think, oh, it's the exact same density as water. It will just hover right there in the middle. No, that neutral buoyancy really doesn't work. Um, face it, the density has to be greater or less than. It can't be exactly equal to, to the infinite decimal point. So it might appear to be the same, just the three significant figures, but certainly somewhere out along the way, one's going to be more dense than the other, and the object will float or sink. So there are some density problems that should help you with the density problems you'll see in class.